Hey there guys, welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to take a larger hard drive and clone it to a smaller SSD. So you may be in a similar situation to my friend here. So my friend has an older laptop that uses a traditional spinning hard drive. So uh, by that, I mean a two and a half inch drive that has a spinning disc inside. Now, usually older computers will have that as a bottleneck or the limited amount of RAM. And newer versions of Windows use more and more resources. So you may notice over time that as you upgrade your computer to newer software, that it starts to run slower. It doesn't run as well as it used to. Uh, one great thing is you can upgrade a few parts in your computer, one of those being the hard drive. So this computer is about three or four years old and it does use a traditional spinning hard drive. Now, a lot of inexpensive computers that you may be able to buy now um, are starting to come with uh, SSDs, which is great. Um, but if you have an older computer that does have a traditional spinning hard drive, um, these kinds of upgrades are very inexpensive and can be easily done at home. And what we're gonna do here is instead of just replacing the hard drive with an SSD and then reinstalling Windows, we're going to clone the drive to this new SSD. However, the problem here is we're going from a one terabyte hard drive to a 512 gig SSD. Now, it would be a little easier if you were to go one to one and do one terabyte to one terabyte. However, it's not really necessary. So in his case, he's not using the entire hard drive that he has. So even though he has a one terabyte hard drive, he's only using about 100 gigabytes of that. So really, in essence, he doesn't need to have that much storage there. So what we can do is we can shrink that volume and put it on the SSD. And that's what I'm gonna show you how to do in this video. All right, so this is my friend's computer. Um, so as I mentioned, it does have a one terabyte hard drive and we're going to be moving it to a 512 gig SSD. Now I just booted this computer up and one thing I'd like to note here is the usage of the drive. So as you can see, it's at 100% in our task manager. We also have eight gigs of RAM, so it's using about a little over half of that. So those are the bottlenecks of our system. So we're gonna try and alleviate at least one of those by moving this to an SSD. Now, in order to accomplish what we're trying to accomplish, we do need three different things. You're of course going to need a solid state drive. So if you do have a traditional spinning hard drive, it's most likely a 2.5 inch SSD like this one. This one is a 512 gig SSD. This cost me about $29 on Amazon. You're also going to need an adapter. So this here is a SATA to USB adapter. As you can see, this is USB 3 because of the blue on the adapter itself. And these cost anywhere between uh, nine to $15, uh, depending on which one you get. And the final thing we'll need is software, of course. So in this case, I'm gonna use something called Macrium Reflect Free. And this is what we're going to use to clone the drive. All right, so I do have Macrium Reflect installed now, and as you can see, it's only showing our one drive. Now we need to plug in our new drive to the computer. So we have our SATA to USB, and we have our SSD. So we just have to line this up properly, so you do have a smaller section on the actual adapter and a larger section. You just wanna line those up properly with this, and then it'll plug in like so. And then we're going to take our USB, and we're gonna plug that into our computer. A recommendation here is this is a super speed USB 3, a capable cable. So you want to plug that into a super speed port. So on your laptop, you may have some super speed on one side and some that are regular speed on the other. I'd recommend plugging this into one of those super speed ports that you have. Now the drive may not initiate by itself. So we need to go to create and format hard drive partitions. Um, so you can type in drive at the bottom and this should show up in your search results. This way we can initiate the drive and then we can also reduce the size of our main drive so that we can clone the drives so as you can see, once we go in there, we do need to initiate the drive. It's going to ask you if you want to use MBR or GPT. So we'll go ahead and go with GPT. And then as you can see, we do have both of our drives listed here at the bottom. So at the very bottom, you'll see zero is our main drive and one is the new drive. And you can see the difference in the storage. So we have 931.50 gigs on the main drive and 476.92 gigs on the other drive. So what we need to do here is we need to reduce this enough so that it will fit here because we do have a couple of partitions on the main drive. So we're going to right click on our main drive and we're going to shrink the volume. 
All right, we have a box that pops up here. It, tells, it shows you your total size before the shrink in megabytes, the size of available shrink in megabytes, and the enter the amount of space you want to shrink in megabytes. So we actually don't want to do 807,194. We want to do something um, a little bit less than that because we still want to leave some uh, empty space on this partition before we clone it. But we just have to have it smaller than what it is now so it'll fit on the new drive. Now, once we move it to the new drive, we can then expand it to what it what it actually has. So if we do choose a smaller amount and it comes out that the uh, that a portion of the new drive is unallocated, as you can see in the, in the bottom frame here, it says unallocated. If we have some part of that that's unallocated, we can then extend the volume to completely fill it once we change the drive over. All right, so here's the number I've chosen. I've chosen the 700,000. So as you can see, total size after shrink is 253,009. So there will still be some empty space on the drive, but that's fine, there'll be less to clone, and then we can uh, actually expand this to fill the new disk once we trans transfer it into the computer. All right, and it's now doing its magic. So as you can see, 930.67 gigabytes in that Windows C drive. All right, and here is the change. So now as you can see, the C drive is now 247.08 gigabytes, and there are 683 gigs of unallocated space. But what this means is that all the partitions on the existing drive will now fit on the new drive. Now, although this is not going to fill up that 476.92 gigabytes on the new drive, as I mentioned, we'll expand this later. So you don't have to be exact when you do this. We just need to clone the drive and make sure that everything fits. All right, and here we are back in Mac Room Reflect Free. So I did have to restart the program. And as you can see, we can now see both of the drives. So we are cloning this drive exactly as it is. So as you can see, we have this empty space. We have the uh, four different partitions. So we have a system partition, a NUN partition. We have our primary Windows partition, as well as another partition. So these are all going to be cloned completely. So we're going to go ahead and click clone this disk. All right, and as you can see, we have the main disk selected. We're going to go ahead and select a, a disk to clone to. And that's going to be disk two. All right, so we're going to go ahead and we'll, we'll erase the disk first completely. So as you can see, there's nothing going to be, there will be nothing on this drive at all. And then we're going to go ahead and copy the partitions. Exact fit. So as you can see, it's now an exact fit. So everything should be exactly as it is up here. The only difference will be that unallocated space that I mentioned because we did shrink the partition so it would fit. So everything will fit as it should. Now, once we've done that, we can go ahead and click next. All right, it says schedule this clone. So if you wanted to schedule it for a later time, you can. However, we're gonna do this right now. Go ahead and click next. All right, and as you can see, we have the source disk. We have the destination disk. It has intelligent sector copy. So verify, delta, SSD trim. Um, and this is chosen all by itself here. And as you can see, it has a lot more information uh, down here showing us what it is copying. So these are the different operations in order. And once we're ready, we'll go ahead and click finish. All right, and then it says, what do you wanna do now? Run this backup now, save as backup definition file, and we'll go ahead and save it to the uh, reflect file. So we'll go ahead and click okay. All right, so as you can see, it is starting the clone and is currently in progress. And now the clone is completed. And as you can see, it did complete in an hour and 13 minutes and 46 seconds. All right, if we take a look at our disk management section, you can see that everything is very, very similar here. The only exception being the unallocated space is completely different because uh, we had to reduce our partition from the larger drive. But the great thing is now that we are done, we can now take the drive that we just copied and we can swap them out and we should be able to boot right into Windows because we cloned it one for one. And now for this laptop, we're gonna go ahead and remove this drive and we're going to replace it with this one. And now the SSD is now in the computer, so let's go ahead and test it out. And now for a fun test, we're going to do a startup test. So we are using the hard drive from the computer. Uh, this is the one terabyte hard drive before we change it out. So let's go ahead and test it out. All right, and about 48 seconds to the welcome screen. Let's see if we can get this logged in. And just about a minute, we'll say a minute and eight, but it's still loading everything. So a lot longer than that. So over a minute to just boot into Windows and be able to use it. All right, so as you remember, 
over a minute to start before. Let's go ahead and reset this and go ahead and start it with our SSD. And there you go. In about 47 seconds, we're to our home screen. Much better with an SSD. Now we have one step left. So we are now on the computer with the SSD. And as you remember, we did have to reduce the size of the partition for Windows. But now we're on our new SSD. So what we can do is we can extend it to take over the unallocated space so that you have the complete use of the drive. So we're going to right click on our drive and we're going to extend it. So as you can see, the extend volume option, we're going to go ahead and click on that. And then we're going to go ahead and click next. And then just verify that the maximum space is being offered. Go ahead and click next and then click finish. And once you select it, as you can see, it's going to take up the entire drive. So now you have 476 gigs of available uh, space. 476 and only 130 is used. So we still have a lot of space with this hard drive. 476 and only 130 is used. So we still have a lot of space with this hard drive. So there you guys have it. That is how to clone your drive if you have a larger hard drive and a smaller SSD. Hopefully this helped you out if you were trying to do this. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.